understand how I love my father. Let's talk about my father. I like this. I like this. We have, who have question about my father? One, one question, sorry. Have please, you please, you please, please. I want to talk about my father. And you, sometimes you don't respect your parents. Uh, you have to remember everything. Uh, when you grow up, how they support you, how they give you life, you know. This is very important. Be your parents close and that's it. I want to say thank you so much, God, first of all. I have father here. My father. I want to say thank you for my father. Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. I wanted to go ahead and reflect on the recent passing of Khabib's father. We want to send our duas, our salams to him and his family. And may God Almighty, the Creator, Allah, may He ease their pain, uh, ease their trial, and reunite, grant their father Jannah, and inshallah, reunite him with his father in Jannah. So there's three points that I just wanted to cover real quick. What, what actually happens? We often hear this statement, well, a, when a person dies, that he went to a better place, he died in peace. There's some truth to the statement, but let's, let's analyze this quickly in context. Yes, for a believer, a person who lived their purpose, who prepared for the match, meaning that if a person neglected their duty, and I'll specifically make an example for some of these UFC fighters, they'll probably watch this. If you didn't prepare for your match, if you didn't train hard, if you didn't follow the regimen of your coaches, your nutritionist, and now you step in that ring, most likely you're not going to have a good match. You're not going to have a good day. But we have a bigger match, this test that we are living in right now. And if a person fulfilled their ultimate purpose, not a sub subjective purpose, when someone's asked this question, many people, they fall into a trance they fall into a, a dumbfound look when you're asking a person what is the purpose of life why have you been created you know people give subjective answers well i've been created to be a ufc fighter well i've been created to love and live and i've been created for this and that and everything under the sun but nobody has truly investigated what is the ultimate purpose in life but when a person seeks to know they shall find out if they're sincere humble heart and they ask the creator of the heavens and the earth god almighty allah will guide them so now a if a person truly lived according to god's will not their desires then they will as we know the angels will come and they'll give them glad tidings of the meeting with their lord that their lord is pleased with them they shouldn't grieve uh, or be sad and they will be in a good place you know there's just this is a, a, there's so many details of what happens after death in Islam it's amazing like nothing else out there having a complete description from A to Z of the what happens after death so we have one description of a person in their grave they'll be shown the hellfire for example and a terrifying sight but then they'll, they're gonna be told that this is what you would have been in you would have been in the hellfire if you would have followed your desires if you were to worship other than God Almighty the Creator uh, and you would have lived a life of negligence and not fulfilling your true purpose but then they'll be shown paradise and they'll be told this is what is waiting for you so that person has a good ending that person because they live the ultimate person Two, the other thing is that for us now living is this just when we hear about these things it's a time of reflection it's a time to think I was talking to a person the other day and one of their family relatives caught cancer and they were just like in a state of shock, numbness. But these feelings, they're there for a reason to have us reflect, to have us to think because pretty soon that feeling will leave. But either you capitalize on that feeling right now and you think, okay, that person was living, that person is gone. I'm living, I'll be gone. Everything seems to be in the past tense. I was here. I was there. I was the UFC champion. I was the greatest. I was this. I was that. But then, you know, I was here. I was there. But then the party's over. The lights come on. It's finished. What do you have left? The hangover? I mean, it's a time when these things happen, when we hear of someone passing. These are one of the ultimate signs that there is a creator, that there is accountability. And it doesn't make sense that we will go through this life and at the end, we just die and turn to dust. That doesn't make any sense. So number two, the point is to really reflect. And many of us feel that pain. It's real. Someone passes 
and in this case, Habib's father. And now, how can I take from that? What is the wisdom that I can that I can gain? Is that he beat us to it, and I'm headed there. So what am I going to do about it? Am I going to prepare like I prepare for my UFC match? Am I going to prepare for that moment of death that can come today, tomorrow, next week? It can come. And there's no like, you can't just live like how you want to live. Ignore all the signs. This is a sign that's coming to you. And then at the end, think that I'm going to win the match. This is the match of life. This is the test of life. Are we prepared for what comes next? So that's point number two. And point number three, and I'll conclude, is that... There's a beautiful ayah in the verbatim Word of God Almighty, the Qur'an. And it really emphasizes this point of death. In the original Arabic, which the Qur'an was revealed in, tamper-free, tamper-proof, we have it in its original. If you've read every other book, you owe it to yourself to read it. Read it as a potential, but we know as Muslims, Muslim is one who simply submits his or her will to the Creator of the heavens and the earth, God Almighty Allah the same way Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and all the messengers, they submitted to one God. Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, just being the last in the line of those messengers who called people to worship one God, to be morally upright, complete blueprint for life. That's up for another discussion. But now in this Quran, that's a living miracle, we have God Almighty Allah speaking to us, and He says, Look at this. God Almighty Allah is saying, very powerful, pay attention, take heed. Every soul will taste death. And only on the day of judgment will you be paid back your full recompense. Only that person who is removed, he who is removed far from the hellfire and admitted to the Jannah, to the paradise, has achieved the objective of this life because the life of this world is merely the goods and chattels of deception. Isn't that? That's deep. So what is true success? It is being removed far from the hellfire because the hellfire is real. It is real. And we, we want to be removed far from the hellfire. And how are you going to do that? by obeying your Creator, by knowing your Creator. And when you know your Creator, you will love your Creator. And when you love your Creator, you will obey your Creator. And when you do that, that's how you're prepared for death, that moment that it comes like it came to Habib's father and it's gonna to come to Habib, it's gonna to come to me, it's gonna to come to my father, to all of us. So when we implement this, we're prepared, Allah is telling us, God Almighty is telling us that every soul will taste death. So now that should have us thinking, be on guard not be racing for all of the materialism of this life, following a person's lust, passions, and desires, debauchery, and all that other stuff. But now you live how your Creator wants you to live. You slip and fall, but you get right back up, and you hang in there. And then a person, inshallah, God willing, will be, by God Almighty's grace, mercy, and love, be removed far from the hellfire. And that's the objective. That's the purpose. That's a part of worshiping your Creator alone without any associates or partners. And that's the objective and purpose of life. As God Almighty Allah is saying in the Quran, like no other book, no two philosophers can get it right. Arguing over this, that, and the other, calling people to the purpose of life. And God Almighty again reminds us in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not, God Almighty is saying, I have not created the jinn and the mankind except to worship Him and worship Him alone. And worship is doing everything that God Almighty loves and staying away from everything that He told you to stay away from. It's worship. So with these points, I want to conclude. And again, we send our du'as, our salams, and du'as to Habib and his family. And may God Almighty Allah grant his father, forgive his father, and grant him Jannah, and reunite him, Habib, with his father in Jannah. And us also, forgive us our shortcomings, and give us all a good end, and grant us Jannah, because that's what our GPS should be set to working in this life so we can pass this test of life and so we can get because this life is transitory, it's short, it's going to end at any time and we don't want to be losers in this life because this life we're going to lose and then we invested all of our efforts in this life, we lost it and then we didn't invest anything for the next life and then we lost that too. No. Now we want to set a legacy of doing good deeds of living our true purpose so we can plant seeds of goodness, so we can be winners in this life, leave a good legacy behind that's going to be transferable credits to the next life, and that's the real life because that is forever.
forever, ever? Yes, forever, ever. Thank you. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.